so folks, everybody is angry at old Donnie tonight. Me, probably you as well. Certainly the current actual good president and even a top judge is furious at Trump tonight for disobeying him, for not listening, not following the rules, the deadlines, the guidelines. And it all kicks off because Donald Trump tried to politicize his current legal predicament, and he tried to personally insult Joe Biden and everyone that's against him, even if, you know, they have reason to be against him. But it instantly smacked him in the face in real time, and the judge is furious, and it's going to cost Trump dozens of millions of more dollars yet again. I want you to watch every second of this. It starts with Donald Trump mocking Biden. Biden responds, but guys, at the very end, end, you see a legal blow to Trump that's brand new. I am the first to bring it to you on this entire website. And you guys are going to smile when you see it because old Donnie, he just lost another hundred million likely. And that was the worst president in history, making the worst state of the union speech in history. But if you're a disillusioned Democrat, of which there are many today, I extend an open hand, an open invitation, and I ask you to join us on the noble quest of saving our country, saving our country. Together, we will turn the page forever on the miserable nightmare of the Biden presidency. What a presidency, what a president, the most incompetent president we've ever had. The worst president, the most incompetent, and the most corrupt. Other than that, I think he's doing actually quite a good job. And we will make America great again. Two nights ago, we all heard Crooked Joe's angry, dark, hate-filled rant of a State of the Union address. Wasn't it? Didn't it bring us together? Remember, he said, I'm going to bring the country to, 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 together. I'm going to bring it together. No, no. He's a threat to democracy. I will tell you, he's a threat to democracy. Mr. President, it's great to see you again. Thank you Good for doing this. Good to see this. you. So that was one hell of a speech you gave Thursday night. I'm going to touch on three specific areas there. The first one being, you know, I noticed the look of surprise on your face when you walked into the chamber and you saw Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, it was priceless. You feigned shock at, at seeing her. But during your response to her heckling of you, you used the word illegal when talking about the man who allegedly killed um, uh, Lake and Riley. An undocumented person. And I shouldn't have used illegal. I should have, it's undocumented. And look, when I spoke about the difference between Trump and me, one of the things I talked about on the border was that his, the way he talks about vermin, the way he talks about these people polluting the blood. I talked about what I'm not going to do, what I won't do. I'm not going to treat any, any, any of these people with disrespect. Look, they built the country. The reason our economy is growing, we have to control the border and, and more orderly flow. But I, I don't share his view at all. So you, you regret using that word? Yes. Um, what was it like for you to see Republicans not cheer your tough words for Vladimir Putin or for defending democracy or any of the other things Republicans used to stand for? Well, I think some of them still do stand for it, but they're pretty much intimidated by Trump right now. I mean, the idea that, look, I'm talking to you, I'm down here talking to these folks who are starting businesses, getting endorsed by minority businesses. He's up with Marjorie Taylor Greene in North Georgia. Yesterday, he spends the time at his mansion with uh, at his resort with Orban. He talks about his great respect for, you know, the president of North Korea. I mean, he praises Putin. I mean, it's, it's a different world. Was that a mistake on, on Trump's part? to host Orban. I mean, he is a member of NATO. He's a member of NATO, but he says he doesn't believe in democracy. I mean, look, the guys I host, the people I'm with, are the people who, in fact, in NATO have great respect for one another. And uh, But uh, look, when you have a president who, in the midst of the carnage going on as a consequence of Russian attack on Ukraine, and talks about 
come in, Putin, if, you, if these guys haven't paid their dues, you, you just do what you need in NATO. I mean, they, he talked about getting out of NATO. I mean, it's a critical to our national defense. We made a commitment after World War II to never let it happen again. Look what he's doing. He's dangerous. ...that he sued in the U.K. Let's bring in former federal prosecutor Shan Wu for all of these legal threads. So, uh, Shan, Trump just talked about this uh, $91 million that he's got to pay. He didn't mention E. Jean Carroll's name, but this is what he said. Let's take a listen. I just posted a $91 million bond, $91 million, on a fake story, totally made-up story. Think of it. $91 million. I could say things about what it would cost normally, 91 million, based on false accusations made about me by a woman that I knew nothing about, didn't know, never heard of. I know nothing about her. She wrote a book. She said things. And when I denied it, I said, it's so crazy. It's false. I got sued for defamation. So, Shan, calling it a fake, made-up story um, that he knew nothing about, this woman he calls it so crazy. To, how, does this open him up more, to more legal issues? Yeah, he's the gift that keeps on giving uh, to Eugene Carroll and her attorneys. I mean, that's basically the whole kit and caboodle all over again. He continues to say it's false. He says it's made up. And that certainly opens him up to that. I mean, you know, it's a legal strategic decision if they want to do another defamation suit. But on the face of it, even though he doesn't name her, it's obvious, I mean, incredibly obvious, that's the amount of money and those are the allegations. So it seems clear he's continuing to claim that's false. So he was already found liable. He's right. already been told to pay more than $90 million. He's posted that bond. So you're saying that Carol and her legal team could bring a new case based on what he's just said? Oh, I think so, yeah. I mean, that, that's up to them. They're, they're the experts on it. But based just on listening to what he's saying, he is again saying that her allegations are crazy, that they're false, and he doesn't even know her. So is there a chance, uh, now that he's posted this bond, that, that she will indeed see that money? I mean, he is appealing. Uh, the bond is meant to ensure that if, as soon as he loses the appeal, which I think he will, that that money is right away made available. So that certainly is a big step towards that. Uh, otherwise, you know, he'd have to put it up himself, and that's obviously impossible for him at the moment with these financial crunches he's undergoing. All right, remarkable that he would risk uh, doing that so soon after, after this case. Right. Shen Wu, thanks very much. Appreciate okay. it. And coming up, the truth is out there. We're see firing some 50,000 government workers and replacing them with pre-vetted MAGA loyalists. And he will weaponize the FBI and DOJ against his political enemies. President Biden warned about it on the stump in Georgia earlier this evening. Watch. It's not hyperbole to suggest our freedoms are literally on the ballot this November. <laughs> Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans are trying to take our freedoms away. And by the way, not all Republicans. This ain't, this ain't your father's Republican Party. These guys are different. Now, considering all of this, I have one question for everyone. How is this race even remotely competitive? How is Donald Trump, according to the latest New York Times Siena College poll, actually leading Joe Biden by some five points? President Biden's messaging is not landing, perhaps. Neither is the clear and glaring dangers of a second Trump presidency with American voters. What about the contrast between these men that isn't getting through to the American people? And that's where we kick off this hour. Uh, Ruth ben a professor of history at New York University and author of Strong Men, Mussolini to the President. Uh, Carlos Curbelo, a former congressman and an MSNBC political analyst and former Senator Barbara Boxer. It's great to have all three of you with us. Uh, Ruth, I'll start with you. You know, you have Trump, a man who has pledged to be a dictator on day one. And somehow, despite his threats to our democracy, he is polling neck and neck with Joe Biden and beating him in some of these polls. How do you explain this phenomenon? And, and when you look back in history, are there any patterns that can help explain to our viewers and to us why we're seeing this phenomena play out? Yeah, so Trump has been stupendously successful in building a leadership cult, building a cult of personality, and convincing uh, people. And it's quite extraordinary. I actually don't know of any other case in history where somebody pulled off a mass deception at this scale in an open society with a pluralistic media. And here I'm referring to his claim that he uh, won the 2020 election. 
uh, you know, Hitler, Mussolini, other dictators, they did this in a closed society, convinced people of their lies. Donald Trump has done this in an open society, which speaks to the strength of his cult. He's also been able to uh, play the victim very, very successfully. And this doesn't get enough attention in that it makes his uh, followers feel protective of him. Uh, like they, 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 and anything else that happens to him is just confirmation of this belief that he's a victim, he's being persecuted. So January 6th was an attempt to save a distressed leader and people rallied. And so this is a continuation of that ideology of saving the leader from an unjust fate. Senator, let me... Um